My name is Patrick Devine Wright, and I am about to start tomorrow uh, the attempt to break the record for the fastest completion of the Southwest Coast Path in one go. Well, there are many reasons why I've decided to do this. Um, I was certainly looking for a challenge this year. Uh, last year, I did several long distance record attempt attempt runs around this area, including the East Devon Way and the East Devon Round, uh, which were 40 miles and 70 miles respectively, and I managed to br break the records of each of those. Uh, I also took on my first 100 mile race last September, and I finished second in the Cotswold Way uh, Century Race. Um, I felt pretty good during it and pretty good after as well, so I came out of those experiences thinking, what shall I do in 2015? One day to go, 24 hours to go, um, here I am in my front room and I have amassed here a huge amount of supplies that I will be relying on over the next two weeks and this is everything from um, foods to water to soups to equipment uh, to medical kit to um, uh, and lots and lots of clothing as well. I've got t-shirts and uh, buckets for fundraising. Uh, in here I've got like uh, all the clothing I think I might need, so endless amounts of socks and t-shirts and shorts and uh, wet weather gear, gloves, hats, you name it, everything that I think might happen over the next two weeks. And I've, I've had a very strong emphasis upon uh, eating the right kind of food. I think nutrition is going to be very important in an event this long and I'm incredibly uh, lucky to have been sponsored by a whole food shop called Ganesha Whole Foods who are based in the southwest of England and they have provided to me free of charge a huge amount of fantastic nutritious food. So dried fruits like dried apricots and apples and pears and bananas. Um, I have nourishing soups, I have um, apple juice to mix with water to have a hypertonic drink during the day. I've got packets of crisps for the salt that I needed. Um, all kinds of useful things that hopefully will get me through the next two weeks in one piece. Um, clothing, sleeping stuff, you name it. I've tried to be as methodical as I can um, and I hope that I've got everything here that I will need. The challenge now will be trying to get all of this into the car um, and also knowing where everything is so that if you need something quickly you can find it and have it and then get on your way. For example tomorrow when I'm running during the day and I just want to have something in particular that I've got a taste for. So there you go. Camped up there the night before, and but depending on what time of day, it sounds like it's going to be middle of the day when it comes through. So we'll make a plan, but anyway, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Sorry, Dolly, that's you. Hi. Camping over there for any. Hang on, I'm going to video it. Don't do it. See you in mine. See you in Pool. Hang on. Okay, well done. Good luck, Daddy. Wait, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Um, I enjoy running on the coastal path in the East Devon section, I know it very well. Um, and I knew that there was the Southwest Coast Path out there. Um, I knew nobody had tried it for a couple of years. And I guess I was curious to see whether I could maybe get close to the record. Um, the other thing is that I knew that it was an opportunity to maybe raise some funds for some worthy charities. And uh, for that reason, um, it's a very important part of what I'm doing is to try and raise money for um, what I call the sea, land and air aspects of my fundraising. So for the sea, it's the, the WAVE project, which is a children's project out of Cornwall. Uh, for the land, it's the Southwest Coast Path Association that looks after parts of the path that have been eroded. And uh, for the air bit, it's the Devon Air Ambulance Trust, which is a very important charity rescuing people um, in inaccessible locations. So. There's a whole host of different reasons why I think I've decided to do it. Maybe it was the right time for me in my life and uh, um, given what I had tried to do last year in terms of long distance endurance running um, and also an opportunity maybe to, uh, to help out some worthy charities. The kind of checked blue Patagonia shirt. It's in a white cloth bag. Okay, I'm about four hours into day one, uh, just on the outskirts of Linton and Lynmouth and uh, it's gone very very smoothly so far 
um, pleasant surprise at the beginning of the day to see some old friends from uh, our neck of the woods in the Blackdown Hills come up um, by surprise to see us off. Um, and then I ran the first six or seven miles with my son Alfie, which was fantastic. Took it nice and easy, managed to get lost in the woods almost at the word go, which was a bit embarrassing. But uh, anyway, found the path again, and it's been very, very smooth since then. Uh, the sun's getting up, so I'm making the, as much use of the shade as I can. Um, I'm eating and drinking as much as I possibly can all the way along, and uh, just taking it nice and steady pace. Take it easy. Long, long way still to go today. Um, I've probably done about 20 miles now, but I've still got a good 30 to go today. Uh, maybe even more, depending on how far I go. And then that's only day one completed, so things going well. Legs feel great, body feels good. Um, no issues with my knee, so uh, everything good. So I'm feeling great and enjoying myself. Just coming up to 7 o'clock, which is 11 hours after I started this morning at 8 o'clock at my end. And we're just on the southern side of the, the beach from Willicum. I've just run about 50, 50 odd miles with about 12,000 feet of climb. I feel pretty good. Um, I felt very strong at times, a little bit heavy legged in the last couple of miles but uh, nothing to worry about. No injuries or anything like that, just general heaviness of legs. That's what you'd probably expect anyway. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty happy with the way today went. I had fantastic support from start to finish, so thank you to my family. And uh, looking forward to having a good rest now and hopefully feeling 100% again tomorrow morning. I'm doing it all over again. My legs. Come on, warm up, warm up. Yeah. It's uh, conditions are very different from yesterday. They're warmer and hotter. Um, a lot of yesterday was running in the mist and through the woods beside the coast. Here it's pretty unremitting. There's very little shelter and shade, and the, uh, there's no mist. Um, I've just run a long section on a hard cycle path, which has been quite difficult. Just monotonous, long, long stretches. So I'm quite glad to get that behind me. Hopefully, um, it'll be a bit more like cross country now for the next couple of miles. I feel quite tired. Having not brought them a present, you can always do what Steve, the singer, was saying. Well, today.
today was my second day of the Southwest Coast Patrol Run, and uh, I expected today to be fairly easy, um, sandwiched between two very difficult days. But actually, that's not how it turned out at all. The main thing I think which made it tough was that so much of today's run was on a kind of a concrete track, the Tarka Trail, which is really designed for bicycles more than runners. And I'm not used to running on that surface, and I found it very, very hard. And I followed it for maybe three or four hours around the estuary to Barnstable and then across to Biddeford and then up to Appledore. And uh, they were the hours uh, around the middle of the day as well when the heat was at its worst and there was no shade. So that was very, very difficult. And it brought on a soreness in my knee, which gradually got worse and worse as the day went on. And by the time I got to Westward Ho, it was making it very difficult to run at all and the long stretch from Westward Ho back to Cloverley, which was the end of the day for me, which is about 11 or 12 miles, was largely a walk. Um, I found it very difficult to go down any kind of steep hill because my knee wouldn't take the, the, the weight, and going up hills was very difficult because my quads and legs were just sore and heavy legged. So uh, that was a very tough end to the day. Um, I finished not really knowing whether I could go any further, uh, whether I'll be able to proceed tomorrow, uh, whether it's all going up in smoke, but uh, having said that, um, I've done two days, I'm on schedule, uh, I've reached both destinations and uh, I've been trying to treat my knee since I finished, putting cold on it, having a bath, taking ibuprofen and uh, with a bit of luck it will be a lot better tomorrow and the terrain tomorrow is tough but uh, Having said that, it's the kind of running that I enjoy doing. It'll be soft, underfoot, uh, it'll be all off-road, no concrete and uh, spectacular scenery. So with a bit of luck, everything will go well tomorrow and uh, I'll be back running well again. Right, Patrick has uh, come into Heartland Quay now, having made good time. He did the first um, seven miles at an average of 12 minute miles and he's kept the same speed to here. His knee now is starting to give him a little bit more trouble. He's put a, he tried a near pin sleeve on, he wasn't so comfortable with that, so he's changed to an elastic stocking. But again, we're not, he's not looking too comfortable, but hopefully it'll loosen up as he moves. He's also taken some poles with him that will help take a little bit of the loading off the knee as he goes down and makes his ascents. It has struck me at times that it might all go pear-shaped. Um, I might not make it, I might not be up to it. Of course it has, yeah. I mean, nobody is ever 100% bulletproof confident going into an event like this. 
the longer it is and the more challenging it is, the more things that could possibly go wrong. Uh, it isn't just down to me or my fitness. Um, it's down to the quality of sleep I get in all the different places I stay around uh, the, the two weeks. Um, it's around the kind of foods I eat and whether they work uh, for me and whether I, I manage to stave off not being ill or depleted or, or tired or fatigued, um, how much recovery I do. There's a lot of people who will be supporting me, driving around in cars, uh, friends who have given up time to meet me at certain places. Um, if any of that unravels or doesn't quite happen the way I'd like it to, then the whole thing could go up in smoke. So, yeah, in, in any event like this, there are possibilities. Um, you just have to prepare as thoroughly as you can um, in every possible way and uh, just trust that you'll have a bit of luck um, when it all starts rolling out. Um, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's not a big deal. I won't feel hugely disappointed. Um, I feel very lucky that I've even had a chance to try and uh, give it a crack. So, you know, with a bit of luck it'll work out. It doesn't, it doesn't. Just, just kind of persuade my lens. Yeah, um, well, I, I ran really well this morning. I felt really, really good. I've just uh, run out of steam a little bit this afternoon. Maybe I went too quick this morning. I don't know. It's not the only one to run out of steam. Yeah. Whatever, every step is a step in the right direction. Yeah. Fantastically well. The sun is shining. I think you're doing brilliant, Patrick. A couple more hours. Yeah. 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 <coughs> really nice getting my shoes and socks off and getting down onto the beach and going into the water at Penhill Sands. Actually the water was bloody freezing so I didn't actually stay in the water very long but it was nice just to get out of the shoes and give them a bit of a bathe. It's just it's such a long day, it's nearly 12 hours again today and the big difference between this afternoon and anything before was this rock. There's no grass anymore in Cornwall. It's just loads and loads of small stones and it's quite technical so you've got to be very very careful going down hills. Um, so it's been quite hard, just a hard surface all the time. And when you're when it's warm as well, you just feel Do you want to sit down magic. and to take them off? No, I'm fine actually. I I'm I feel physically better for having um walked that last section. Oh, I've got Find this again. The surgery later. Same yeah. photograph as before. Well, let me just get my sock, sock both socks off. Yeah, so that one's gone black as well. Oh, you can see. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. okay, so yesterday was the fifth day, and. Um, it was great because I had some friends who came down to join me. Uh, Richard Easton, who ran with me for a bit, and uh, Alex and Otto, friends from Bath. So different people joined myself and Rambo at the start and uh, ran with me for quite a bit of the first couple of hours. Um, the surface was grassy, the sun was out, and there was even a bit of a wind behind me. So. Um, once I got going and was a bit warmed up, I felt pretty good and uh, was actually running really well. I don't know whether I didn't have the right lunch or not, but I just really faded badly in the afternoon. Um, it wasn't specific pain like I'd had the previous couple of days from my knee. It was just general fatigue um, and st all, the, all of my joints were stiffening up and I, I just became, got slower and slower and slower. So I was still I was still jogging, um, but I was barely moving, and I was just going slower and slower and slower. And by about five o'clock, it really got very, very bad, and I got quite upset and started crying. And it's just, just became very difficult to keep moving. Um, 
But uh, anyway, I felt better having shed a few tears and um, uh, walked the last five kilometres to where we stopped, which was west of Port Reith. So it was a pretty long day altogether, probably did a good 45 miles. Um, still not quite as long as I was hoping to do in my original schedule, but, uh, but a good long day nevertheless. Um, and then back here to uh, St. Ives for our accommodation, courtesy of Maggie, thank you very much. Um, I slept reasonably well, I found it very difficult to get up this morning, I'm incredibly tired. Um, my legs feel like tree trunks. Um, I don't know how easily I'll be able to move today, but I'm just going to start and see how it goes and keep going as well as I can and then we'll just see how the day goes. That's pretty much it. Right, at this point in time, uh, Patrick is behind his schedule for 12 days. Don't forget, it's actually 14 days, 14 hours is the record. And anyone else that goes for the record is going to have exactly the same experiences that Patrick has had. So we mustn't just say, he can't do it, he'll do something, whatever it is. Now it mustn't also be forgotten that um, no challenge is a challenge without a high risk of failure. And I'm not talking about failure here, but you have to always balance everything out. Now it's also another cliche is it's an emotional roller coaster and he has ups and he downs, not only physically, not only physiologically, but also psychologically. And what we have to do is do our very best to give him positive vibes all of the time, whatever we might think, however we might feel, whatever the outcome, we never shout, cast any shadow of doubt to him. And uh, at the moment, I'm confident he can finish the event as to whether it will take him 12 into 13 days or even towards the end of the 13th I'm not sure um, barring injury and other problems foot problems knee trouble these things come and go um, we'll have to see and it's uh, an impossibility to predict each day something else gives him a little bit more difficulty um, and uh, it changes within the day anyway so just watch this space Right, you can see how the descent on the steps are affecting him. This is a man that should be able to leap and bound down these slopes and now his knees are giving him so much pain, every step is hurting. So his quads, his uh, patellar area, the ligaments all around that are really stressing out now. He's going to be really down with this, but you know, just try and keep him going. It's, uh, he's just losing so much time because of this and this is a man that can do anything, so it goes to show how much uh, difficulty there is in this and I think one of the problems is probably more so than the dragon's back it's the number of steps that a man made to maintain the condition of the path you don't get in the mountains I think the steps the greater angle that you have to use to bend and descend is probably the reason this has happened compared to his previous experience but he'll be the best judge of that when he finishes and <laughs> looks at it later and talks An important location in the coastal path, it's, it's uh, exactly halfway, so it's 315 miles to here and I reckon I'm about three hours up on, on the record schedule, so I'm pleased to be still moving really, I felt pretty rubbish uh, this morning, uh, very very stiff, so 
I've got going again, which is great, and the tent poles are good. I'm just trying to walk as quickly as I can. Um, it's been a bit difficult though because we're in a, an area where there's no mobile signal and uh, I've missed my support driver. So I've been on my own for quite a long time now. And, uh, well, we just run out of food. people think of it? Well, I think the most consistent response I've got from people has been to accuse me of being completely mad. Uh, the M word, the mad word, has come up again and again and again. So a lot of people think I'm totally crazy. Um, but the other consistent thing people have said to me is, well, if anybody can uh, break this record, you can. So I guess they think it's totally mad. They think I'm crazy. But they also recognize that it is kind of an extension of things that I already do and that I've already shown myself capable of achieving so um, you know hopefully they also have a bit of confidence that I might be able to do it so yes a lot of incredulous looks um, people slightly puzzled why I would want to do this um, but also people have been really excited and expressing a lot of support I've had amazing amounts of support from complete strangers, people e emailing me out of the blue saying we've heard about your record attempt, we think it's absolutely fantastic what you're trying to take on, um, we're inspired by it, we're excited about it, um, okay we think you're a little bit mad but we think it's brilliant that you're trying to do it and all of that is fantastic and it will uh, stay with me and I'll carry it with me on my way around, um, all the support, all the donations that have come in as well and uh, Hopefully that will also help me across those moments when you're feeling a bit jaded or uh, a bit daunted by it and uh, still able to keep on going and try and get to the finish. from Wembury to um, Dartmouth, so it was another 50 mile chunk and uh, I was lucky to um, have the company of a guy called Jim, Jim uh, Page, who's a friend of mine who ran with me for the rest of the day, which was fantastic uh, to have company and, and um, made it a bit more fun. Um, Yesterday was interesting as well. The highlights were probably the, the river crossings. I had to wade forward through two rivers, uh, one up to my knees, one up to my waist at Big Bray on Sea, which was a bit of an adventure. And uh, yeah, so we, we, we kept on going. I guess it was just a long, long day. Um, we ended up kind of really just walking a lot of the last 10 miles. I was feeling a bit fatigued at that stage. I was still able to walk quite well, but uh, uh, it meant that we didn't get in until quite late, until maybe after 10 o'clock. So it was my longest day so far, but very pleased that I managed to get as far as here, which is another 50 miles ticked off, only three to go. I feel very, very tired this morning, but I'm hoping that the tea will pick me up. And it's great to have some friends here again, helping me out today and accompany me today and hope to see my wife at some stage today as well. And if I can get as far as Exmouth tonight, or maybe even a bit beyond, then I'm on familiar territory and into the last two days, hopefully, I'll be able to crank it out.
Right, we're in uh, Starcross and uh, it's just about nine o'clock at night and I've just finished my 12th day of the, uh, the record attempt. I started just before nine this morning so it was another 12 hour-ish day from Dartmouth. And, uh, I felt really horrible this morning uh, after a very late night but uh, actually felt better as the day went on and uh, feel pretty happy now. I've got about two days left I think and uh, today was fantastic. I had wonderful support from my friends at Axe Valley running with me and uh, that made a huge difference. Um, yeah so I feel very very tired as you might expect but uh, still in the game and hopefully only two days to go. Well, I mean, it's like every other day, I'm trying to get as far as I can. Uh, the difference between every other day and today, though, is that I think I'm going to finish tomorrow. So uh, the end is in sight, and um, yesterday and today have been fantastic. I'm surrounded by uh, pals from the running club and people I know, so the support has been absolutely fantastic and it's really helped hugely. So. Yeah, I'm feeling reasonably good. I was very, very tired this morning, but uh, I'm moving well now and feeling positive and uh, just plugging away, plugging away, plugging away. Hopefully that will do the job. So it's uh, Tuesday morning, must be about half past seven, early start. And uh, this looks like it's probably going to be the last day out. And uh, if I can keep moving and uh, go well, then I should reach the finish sometime this afternoon and hopefully break the record as well. I'm feeling a little bit sleepy, I was up at half past five, um, but at the same time I'm uh, looking forward to hopefully a great day. The last four or five days has just been absolutely fantastic, loads and loads of friends and helped us out, uh, give me a hand, cheering me on, so it's really lifted me. I feel much, much more positive than I did. Uh, ages ago and my body seems to be a lot better as well so obviously I'm still very fatigued but uh, feeling very much up for it and uh, looking forward to the hopefully the final stretch today um, yeah that's pretty much it I think
Yes, look at that. See the end in sight. Yeah, really, is that enough turn? Uh, well, that's about down. Okay, that's um, Swanage. We're at Durston Head, about eight miles to go. Patrick is on fire. We're turning north now, so he is on the home stretch. It's starting to really pick up. I can't believe he's still running at this stage. The guy is a machine. He's doing an awesome job. Can't wait to finish and eat fish and chips. <laughs> I think Patrick's achievement is amazing really. I, I've uh, supported him for about a quarter of the time, three days and three nights. Uh, I reckon I've done about maybe 115 miles with him. I, I wouldn't have done that normally. Uh, so I think it's, it's been quite a challenge for me as well. Uh, and I've just had such fun, such fun. It's been beautiful weather, lovely scenery and uh, it's just been such fun to be with him and, and chat and just enjoy um, the open air. I love running anyway. This is pretty extreme. I don't think I'd ever try and do it myself, by myself, but uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Good on Patrick for doing it. Well, I don't think words can actually express the achievement. The phenomenal way you, you will see in the video of him running into the finish just goes to show what sort of a powerhouse he is, how he persevered through all the pain and the, um, to get to the joy of finishing within the record. So a phenomenal achievement and it's a privilege to have been a small part of that. And uh, I say a small part because everyone has played their, their parts with him over the last two weeks. So it, what can I say, it's just phenomenal. And uh, hats off to him. For me, surely. By Lewis Hamilton. Oh. Oh, you you tweet for that Devon Air Ambulance. Yeah, I would do. Oh, I've got enough energy to do this. We want something to drink. Yeah. Alright, it's coming out. Yay! I did it! Yay! <laughs> it's something to also be there. I can't believe it. Here you go guys, come on in. Yeah, one for everybody in the audience. Hi there. Very difficult to sum up that kind of experience. Um, all I can say is that the, the, the experience of running the coast path is like the coast path itself. It's got huge highs and huge lows. It's a roller coaster of hills and valleys and uh, emotional highs and lows too. So it's been cracking, um, privilege. Uh, 
wonderful experience from start to finish. Don't regret any of it. Really pleased to have tried it and completed it. Feel a great sense of achievement, um, but also feel very lucky to have had the chance to do it. And uh, in particular, to have benefited from an enormous amount of support along the way from people right, left and centre who helped me to do it in lots and lots of different types of ways. I feel very, very lucky and privileged to have had the chance to have a go and uh, to break the record as the icing on the cake. Um, very pleased. So yeah, it's a, a real high point. <laughs> Obviously I'm completely exhausted, but uh, very happy, very, very happy indeed. Kanasha, Kanasha. To mine had 631 30 miles, each one different.